Hey guys, welcome to Comfy Cozy Up. So, before I go into my June wrap up, hope you guys checked out my previous video for my five year <laughs> book two anniversary. And yeah, go check it out, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, so let's get into July. Well, we're in July, guys. Ooh. But anyway, let's talk about June I met. <laughs> so June was Caribbean month. And the, old, the whole idea is to read Caribbean books. So we did have Caribbean and that was 11 days. And I was able to read six books during that time. And I also had read additional four books. So I read a total of 10 books. All Caribbean author. I've never done that in a month. I've read a lot of Caribbean books, but always add something else. But no, all I did was read Caribbean books. So there were some, yes, some really good, some probably going to be on my my top 10 book of the year, um, a favorite that I am crushing on, and I love it. And then there were some womp womp. So I did a video for six of them so I will leave those in the description because I go more deep into why how I really felt about the book so I was trying not to do that in here so this really don't be forever um one of them was a little bit of a rant <laughs> but other than that let's dig in so the first book was by uh Joseph Zobel Zobel and this is Black um, Shack Alley and he is French this is Martinique and fun facts he was inspired by Richard Wright, which is, you know, Black Boy. And also, um, there was Native Son. Black Boy, Native Son? Yeah, Black Boy. I don't know why I mixed that up, um, the, all the books. I don't know all the books from Richard Wright, to be honest with you. Um, I did give you a background story of my indiscretion in high school for not reading <laughs> the book. That's a story for another day. If you guys saw that video, you know what I'm talking about. So this is why I always get his books mixed up in terms of which which one he actually wrote. Now, this book, is the reason why I brought it up is because he influenced this author who is very much respected and loved in um, French literature. He also, of course, influenced James Baldwin. And the full circle of it is, Richard Wright was influenced by... Claude McLean. And you know who Claude McLean was? Jamaican author. So this is where I get the full story. And I love, I love, I love when I read the Harlem Renaissance. I learn so much. And now here goes this other classic that was released. I believe this was in the 50s. Now, it is a coming of age. It is a gem. The writing was absolutely phenomenal. We're talking, this is a translated piece that felt good. And it's a translated piece that had the whole idea of Creole and of course standard French and how they were able to translate to English where it, it it kept the book authentic. I love this. It's a it's a young boy. Boys with boys. It started out with you know being mysterious and playing with your friends and doing what you're not supposed to do, get yourself in trouble kind of deal. But it highlights what Martinique was like during that time. It highlights the struggle of plantation workers who weren't working, wasn't making much. Um, but they were subjected to that kind of work because that's all that was available. He lives with his grandmother. His mother is away. He doesn't know why. Um, but as time goes by, you see his mother pop up and you see her struggle of being a mother and providing for him. It is a center so much on education, um, of community, of family bond. Um, it, it also t deals with depression um, and self-worth and also responsibility of upholding your family's who has did the, I mean, work their butt off to get you in certain positions that you are in. Um, you get this in this, you get the feel of Martinique. You can, like, I, I, in my mind, I'm imagining what the alley look like. Um, there's also people in his life that he met through schools and he see the what is and what happened to some. And it gives you so much in this that I feel like this is one of those classics that should be taught in Caribbean schools um, and I, I don't know if it is if it is let me know if you guys live in the Caribbean if this has ever been taught in a school like this book because this is like something that I feel like would be appreciated it's so good it is so good the cover is amazing and I have so much love for this kind of modern-day classic um, there's a movie 
it is named something else i think it's named sugarcane alley so i was uh i was meant to do the movie adaptation of this and um review it that way it didn't work out but i'm going to still do it so what i'm going to do for july is watch the movie um probably do a weekend vlog and watch the movie and talk about it and see how the movie the movie got um um recognized for awards and stuff so i'm assuming it's good so let's hope they didn't change it too much because i love this little boy this little boy was amazing all right yeah i can talk forever on this one <laughs> the next book i want to talk about is a book that was a bit challenging for me and that is revolution sunday and wendy guerrera now this book toys with the whole idea of um let me read something from here uh, we take off little by little. I feel Cuba leads my body. My soul tries to stay connected to the earth, but it abandoned me. Detached from me, in the air, I can't breathe. I'm choking. Little by little, I scattered. I turn to the water and sand. Without Cuba, I don't exist. I am my island. And this is where the author... <sighs> this is another one of those two where it's loosely biograph but not but it's considered fiction because the author experienced um she was a tv um personality in cuba and then she was banned um mainly for her writing and um so it, it gives you that in here there's a lot of poetry at the end of it um but it's centered around a woman whose um parents died in a car crash and she doesn't really know the entire story or what to even believe about as things are unfolding to her. Um, but she goes through depression. She goes through that whole stage of not feeling like she belongs anywhere, but this is still home is as far as Cuba. And she eventually get out of her grief, out of her depression, and she start writing poetry, which got caught the attention of people outside of Cuba. She's now invited to travel. She can leave Cuba and go as she pleases. She always come back home. So there's that idea of why you staying in Cuba. What is there that you, why you stay where things are happening. Then she's living a life of surveillance, meaning... There's always somebody watching her. There's always somebody breaking into her house and removing everything that she's ever write on her computer. Um, and she's aware of this as time goes on. But then there comes this actor who comes into the picture where he's telling her, no, your parents weren't in an accident, just a regular accident. It was foul play. And your father was like a, more than what you thought he was. And there's so much of where you don't believe in that because at the same time, this is somebody who wants a movie. They want, um, they hope to gain something from um, your, what, the, what your father's life or whether or not it's true. Um, so this is like, it robbed her of certain things in a book that, was conflicting to me. I was a bit confused on certain parts because I kind of felt like it went a bit all over the place at certain parts. Um, but I get the whole idea of the love for your country and also the 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 the, the, the sadness and the things that are uh, for your country that you do not agree with and you you wish wasn't that case. Um, but it still has a bit of isolation for this character. She was very isolated in a lot of ways. Um, even her friends or people she considered acquaintance could not be themselves or say what they want around her because they always felt like this is some, some kind of suspicious because they felt they had an issue with her loyalty to her country kind of deal. Um, that's the best way I can put it. Complicated, but, I, but at the same time it's beautifully written because she has she's, she's a poet. Um, so the way things were explained it had that um, metaphor behind it but it's you know in a poetic way that you kind of have to like think about what the hell she meant by that but at the same time it's, it's something about this book that you still can appreciate even though you feel like um, it needed a little bit more um, work that's the best way to put it all right so let's do the one ebook which is a romance that I did and that was uh, Sweet Hand now it's said in Trinidad, not a damn thing about this book was romantic. Nothing about this book said Trinidad. It just, it just felt like a regular romance, not even a regular, like a mainstream romance. How, you know, it's just very, 
water down. <laughs> and uh, that's how it felt. So this is just about, the, it's a frenemy or, you know, enemy to love a trope. And you have a girl who is a baker and her sister's getting married. And the sister's getting married to a man whose best man happens to be a guy that she do not like. And they all are from the, like, grew up in the same circle kind of deal. And he's into the music industry kind of deal. And she's not really a fan of that because she did somebody who, who did her wrong, who was a part of that industry. That's what you get from this. How they have to work together to come up with this nice bachelorette, combined bachelorette, bachelor thing. And how they have to work together to do that. Now there's aspect of this that was sweet, cute, and all of that. But because I wanted this to be a Caribbean romance, I felt... I was a little disappointed because I wanted I, I wanted to feel the Caribbean. I wanted to feel Trinidad and Tobago in this book and I didn't feel it. And that's where I had the biggest issue. But it is, it's not, it's, it's unfortunately, it's not a memorable book. It's one of those where you're like, oh yeah, I read that. But what was it about again? That kind of deal. Um, so it's just okay. It's okay. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just okay. So we'll leave that there. All right, let's go to the next book. Sweetheart, and this is by Alicia McKenzie. This is another surprise, small. I thought it was a short story. It is not. Um, it's not a short story collection like I thought it was. It's a regular book. But the way this is written, it's, it still gives you the theme of uh, another author where it's written in uh, in um, different um, character perspective. So we have the main character who is, um, have the task of um, dividing half of her friend's ashes half stay in, in Jamaica, the other half is supposed to go to uh, New York. And you're learning about the friend that died. You're learning about her um, childhood growing up, her family dynamic. Um, they, you learn about their friendship. You also learn about other family members as far as um, who raised them, mother, aunt, that kind of deal. And how they all feel about the character that died. And even though it folk, the main character has more part in it, each chapter is really someone else. Even the father, um, you know, there's other people in there that you, the, the chapter focus on. And you, you, you are, you get in more insight and opinion about the, the character that died. Um, but it's done in a way that it made sense. It's done in a way where you feel it, you understand. But it's also done in a way where, um, where secrets are in unfold and things that happen in this book, I felt that um, um, still had that mystery to it, and the author purposely did that, and it 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 it's, it's supposed to be that way kind of deal, and you appreciate those kind of book that is done right, where that kind of ending is satisfying. So I love this. I read this through um, Corbathon, and I will link this you know down. But it's my third book from the author. She ain't done me wrong yet. <laughs> <laughs> love her all right so the next book is uh Beauvoir. now this is another book by Kwame Dawes that a poet again this is he is known for his poetry not his novel but his poetry it's, it's, it's quite a few poets up in this mix here this is another one where he kind of lost me a little bit and because there's something that something that happened towards the end that I'm still scratching my head about but nevertheless I would say um, it just deals with grief it deals with grief it deals with um, loss um, it deals with um, how you deal with trauma and things that happen so we have this man whose father who has the same exact name died and there's belief around it by people who think that it was foul play it wasn't it was medical neglect or political um, he doesn't know, but he just knows certain things about his father. So you heard, you're hearing this whole idea of, um, uh, the, the person's, um, unpublished words, um, throughout this. Now, let me tell you, <laughs> I don't like books that made me struggle, but there's certain things in this book that I kind of felt like, he could have stayed on track with that and that would have been amazing because he really touched on grief in, in different ways and how people grieve in ways um, sexually and the control, which I didn't like. But at the same time, I get it. 
um, he deals with um, the it's it's a complicated one I don't even want to go down the lane with this one yet <laughs> again because I'm so frustrated because I feel like I want to reread this just because I feel like I missed something and I want and I even though I've read a couple of chapters multiple times just to understand it um, I, I feel like I hate books like this that do that to me but go watch the review I did of this because I feel like I'm babbling right now but go, go watch the review I did on this all right, the next book is Lucy. Oh, Lucy. This is one of my favorite books this year. Five star. No if ends about about it. This book will be us in a special place. Special place. And Jamaica Kincaid did it for me. And this is about a girl who leaves our island. So imagine leaving your island, your island that has problems, things that happen, and you are in a new country and you miss even that part of the island that you don't even like um because everything is different you realize certain things about the island is you a part of you the thing about this character is she's young she's at that fragile age of you know 19 she's starting to become this woman and she is in a house where she is a caretaker of um, a family and they you know a mother her child a children and a husband who is not quite you know so nice <laughs> and while she's there uh, her herself is exploring friendship she's exploring her um, her sexuality and she exploring things that um, you learn that she's struggling even with forgiveness um, and it's layers of her that you see in this story that um, I, I thought it was like bits and pieces of things that I can relate to, uh, things that I, I, I understand. I understood her so well. And the, the the there's a part where she is journaling and that part really hit me where I was like, yo, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> I'm not gonna cry because I understood that moment. I understood that honesty with yourself and that struggle. Um, I understood that and this is one of those stories that I feel it's gonna be personal some people might not feel the same way as me but I don't care because I love when an author can hit me real hard with a book that is meaningful and that is going to be memorable that I'm going to reread and you know treasure and this this is what this book did for me all right let's get to the more Pleasant View, and this is the book that we selected for the group read, and uh, me and Karen, we did a live, so go and check out the live, and we dig deep into each of these stories, and this is a, sto a novel in stories, so it's very similar to the other, to um, Seahawk, but this is a little bit more um, long length and also more in depth in terms of compared to the other one. Um, this one, I would say um, she was creative um authentic um and it touched on different things that i think um as caribbean we can understand and definitely relate to um but also our struggles that we oftentimes um don't talk about or want to talk about and you can really get that in this in this book so definitely go watch the live that we did if you've read it go watch the live so you can like you know you know leave comments and you can see what we were talking about how we felt about this i also saw the author at a sign in so go watch that vlog as well but this was a good book that we picked and i'm so glad that we were able to read this as a group all right the book i rant about this is fire on montserrat this is such an uncomfortable book because the age gap I like age gap romance, but this age gap was so inappropriate um, that it just, and the a drama with it was just, I know, I will not recommend you reading this. I will not. That's all I'm going to say. If you know why, you want to know why, because I talk more about it, go watch my rant video, which is the last um, Kruberthon video that I did, and you'll see why. Yeah. All right. Ah. Uh, Edward Daddy Cat. Uh, <sighs> breath, eyes, and memory. 
very sad but very good very good this is a trauma book so this has trigger warnings this is a book that is um, very emotional but very much a book that unfortunately a lot of women have experienced and have transferred that trauma to their children and this is what you get in this you get a, a young woman who has lived with her aunt and at um, a young age she finally is moving to America to live with her mother and within the first night she realized her mother is struggling with the past and um, and that struggle has led to um, certain things that has passed on from generation to generation that affected her ultimately affect her future her marriage her um, now having ch a child herself and how, how do you break the cycle how do you stop that um, pain that constantly is growing and transferring to another person and you get that with this it is not an easy read it is not a pleasant situation it's not an easy fix as some people would think but when you think of how far back the trauma goes in this it is hard to just erase it overnight and it, uh, without um, confronting it head on. And in this, there was those attempt, but then it also um, created um, the kind of um, trauma that would never go away. That um, ultimately um, ultimately destroy someone, and you get that in this. It is sad absolutely sad um, but it's also beautifully written and um, also has its purpose and I think some people might read this and get um, uh, some form of inspiration of um, how to move forward yeah so this is where I'm gonna leave with this one and then the last book that I read Slave O Man this is another Martinique and this is also very much poetic in how it's written, but also very informative. There's like a literally quite a few pages at the end of forward of um, learning so much about Martinique's history with uh, slavery in the Caribbean. And this is an old man who had to flee, had to flee, had to get away. Um, there is a there's a line that I thought that was so like gripping. He said, the old man slave does not remember the ship, but in a way he still, he's still down. He's still down in its hold. Sorry. Um, so basically, even though he was old, the, the idea and the desire to be free was still there. It's always going to be there. And you get that from this character of him observing over the years and decided this is the time he wants to get away. He's going to flee. Where he's going, he doesn't know. How he's going to survive, doesn't know. But the taste of freedom is still there, And it, even though he's an old man. Um, very clever, very much had his more of an adventure. It had his, 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 his share of memory that are... Um, goes back to what he can remember of his of time before slave before he was slave that kind of deal um, it is it is very much rooted on what you would think happened to those who were able to free you know break free you have um, especially in the Caribbean uh, when you think of other islands like I can talk about Jamaica in terms of the maroons and how they were able to get up in the mountains and were living free. Um, and was fighting back and how did they survive how did how did they get through all of that where there's danger of wildlife and um, you know other things that can you know so this gives you a taste of that where you like imagine and you can see how the author writes is very descriptive of the 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 how he's out in the wild and things that's happening and things he's hearing and the smell of things and what he's rubbing on his skin is very descriptive and you can imagine that i thought it was really well done and as far as martinique it gave me a taste more of martinique because you have where the black shack um alley uh where this where it's after slavery but technically technically they were still having to work on the same plantation that enslaved them versus this is before um they were free and it, he was out there like like he's going to survive um the symbolic of bones in this there's, there's certain things in this that i thought was interesting 
Um, this is definitely a, a study case. This is one of those kind of books that you can really dissect and use on a literary standpoint of um, having a healthy discussion about certain things from this particular island and how the author chose to write this story. Um, I loved it. It's short. It's definitely a book I will reread only because there's certain things about it that I, I absolutely um, was mesmerized by and, you know, how... Um, this translated piece was done in and the, the forward. I mean, the forward in this is very juicy in terms of information. You also, you know, get a bit of um, background on the, the actual author um, himself and the kind of books that he's written. Um, but I'm definitely going to read some more. This, this is it. Yeah. So that is all the 10 books, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to this month, even though I think I'm going to do a nice case of romance in this month, as well as um, when the book list comes out. Um, and I do have some more other books that I've been waiting to read that is definitely going to be read. Um, but yeah, so let me know what was your favorite book that you read in June. What was your favorite Caribbean book, if you were able to read a Caribbean book in June? And yeah, and if you read any of these, what, if you love them, hate them, let me know. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I will see you in the next one.